Hey guys, Happy New Year. It's Michael from Plant Academy. And in this video, we're talking about the latest release of Primavera P6 version 20.12 that was just released in December. In this video, I'm going to go through all of the new features and highlight the important things that have changed in Primavera P6 20.12. I'm pretty excited because a lot of stuff has changed. Now, in case you're interested in skimming the list of all the things that have changed, check out our blog post that I've linked to in the video comments. Check out that blog post where you can see it all laid out in a really nice format for you. Now, I'm really excited to let you know that a quite a few things have changed between version 19.12 and version 20.12 of Primavera P6 Professional. I'm going to do my best to cover all of the changes and new features for you. Some of those new features merit more attention and some of them actually are going to merit some other videos, some new videos that I'm going to cover those features in detail on. I'll do my best to gloss over everything for you in this video so you get an overall picture of all the changes. So grab yourself a cup of cocoa and let's go. Okay, so here is Primavera P6 version 20. Let's load it up. First thing I want to tell you about is that the login screen has changed and considerably. There's some differences here, a whole new interface in version 20. Uh, we kind of have this drop down now for advanced where we can pick our database. And we have some uh, language pickers down at the bottom. Uh, Primavera is happy to announce that they now support Arabic. So the Arabic language is now supported and you can pick it here from the drop down list. Another thing that has changed that's noteworthy is that the whole database configuration screen has changed as well. And it still works more or less the same way, but it's a bit of a different interface. Um, one that we've seen for a long time has been standard and now it's a little different. So you're going to have to get used to configuring databases. Okay, let's log in. Let me start by telling you about one of the new features that we have here. There's a new comments field that's available for relationships. For a long time, we have been unable to put information, comment information next to relationships to help categorize them or to help inform uh, reviewers of schedules why that relationship is there, what it's for, when it was added, stuff like that. Happy to announce that that is changing. Now we have a comments field that's actually built into P6 and we can comment relationships right in the interface. Let me show you that field. If I hover here, I'm on the relationships tab. If I hover and right click on any of these columns, customize columns under general, you'll find this new field here called comments. We'll just add it over here. There we go. And now I'm able to add some comments like this, pretty easy. So that comments field is available for predecessors and successors, and it gives me the ability now to add some documentation around relationships. This is something we have been missing for forever and has long been on the ask list, and now we have it. So good job, Oracle, I'm thrilled with that. In version 20.12 of P6, you'll notice that some of the common screens have changed slightly. For example, the scheduling screen looks a little different. Let's have a look, okay? Um, there's some additional options that you'll see right on the main area of the schedule screen. So for example, now we have this option to choose all projects, use their own data date, or apply selected data date to all open projects. That looks a little different, and I'll dive into that in just a minute. Um, we also have this project forecast start date area, but it's all grayed out. So we'll talk about that soon. Now our log files are able to be produced not just as text, but also as HTML. So if you choose to output your log file, your schedule log file as HTML, it'll start to look like this. So a little nicely formatted um, in an HTML format. And that again gives you the option to publish this to a web page if you choose. One of the main reasons the schedule page has changed is because there's better support in P6 version 20.12 for scheduling multiple projects at the same time. So let me set that up for you. Let's go and open a couple projects and we'll see what happens. Now I'm just going to open two random projects. I have this uh, city center and the NES build and let's open those two guys up. 
Okay, so they're both open at the same time. We can see the list up here. Now, if I go into scheduling, now we can apply this option here. All projects use their own data date, or I can apply one data date to all the open projects if I have multiple projects selected. This is gonna be really handy for those people who are working on um, portfolios of projects that link together. So this is gonna improve our, uh, how we schedule that. Not only that, check this out. When I hit the options tab, the options button here, I can now choose the scheduling options and set them for each individual project as I schedule them together. So this is a big change for how we've been scheduling projects that have been open together. I'm happy to see this. I can now choose different options for each of those projects and schedule them accordingly. All right, I'm gonna rock your world now with a big feature, something that we haven't seen before. So in the Primavera world, we love to use codes, activity codes in particular. Now we have a new kind of code. They're called assignment codes and they're used for resource assignments. So let's, let me show you how all this works. So on the enterprise menu here, you'll see that we actually have assignment codes and role codes. Now I'm gonna gloss over role codes really quick because we don't use roles too much in construction and engineering, but we do now have new role codes, which we can use if we want to. But the assignment codes are really cool because these are codes that exist inside my project that let me code the assignments and then group and sort. So I've created a really basic one here called my test assignment. And where I would use this, I can use this on the resources tab where I can pull out the assignment code here and start assigning them to the resource assignments. Or I can use the resource assignments screen itself. Now we don't use this screen too much, but it's a really big screen for some advanced stuff that I teach. And here we can actually start to fill down some of these assignment codes like this um, and start to use those assignment codes then to group. So we're able now to go into our customized grouping and group by assignment code. Let's grab it here. It's called my assignment code. Let's find it. scroll up there. So some basic grouping. I didn't really flush this out very well. The nice thing about assignment codes is that they are codes inside your project. So this is project level data. It's not shared and it doesn't get messy, but it's again, another way to help us group and sort our resource assignments and really focus on slicing and dicing that data. Okay. I'm pretty excited about this next one. One of the challenges we've had with P6 in updating long projects and long activities has been capturing the month by month progress. So if I had a, a three month activity, how much progress happened in one month versus the next month? I was able to do that with financial periods, but one of the challenges we have with financial periods is that we could not define them on a project by project basis. They were a global construct that would have to be defined once for all projects. And it was really limiting in pulling people away from not even using financial periods. But there's some good news. We now have something called financial period calendars. And those calendars can now be created on a per project basis so that we have avoided this issue. Okay, so basically now financial periods can be on a project by project basis and not global. This will be a game changer for a lot of people using a resource and cost loaded schedules. Let me show you quickly how this looks. Number one, if we go to the project screen and click on the general tab of a project, you'll see the financial period calendar option down at the bottom. So you can pick which calendar uh, to assign to your project. Now, where do we define those calendars? We do it here on the admin menu, financial period calendars, and we can create uh, any number of financial period calendars we want. And when you modify them, this is basically the same way of creating a financial period, um, list of financial periods or buckets that we did before. So this is gonna be a game changer. Um, now we assign those financial periods to a particular project. 
There's some more options here as well related to this. If I go to Edit User Preferences and go to my Application tab, I can also choose here which financial periods to load uh, in order to use those for my project. So as I said, this is going to be a big change for those of you who are using cost and, and resources on your schedule and want to uh, pull out your bucket by bucket, month by month progress. Okay, I've got a few more things I want to talk to you about. Um, there's some new features here on the resource assignment screen. So if you are planning your future periods uh, using remaining units and you're kind of planning those buckets, watch what we can do now. We have now fill down and fill across in our uh, monthly spreadsheet here. So watch, we can put in for this assignment, say 20 hours here, and now we can fill this down a couple um, to different assignments like this. And not only that, I can also fill this across month by month by doing a fill across. And if I really want to get fancy, now I can fill down all of this stuff. So that's a new feature as well. This is going to help us with future period bucket planning. That's what they call it in P6, but basically assigning remaining units to future periods. So spreading our budgeted units out properly over a time uh, period. I've got another thing that's kind of nice that I want to show you. It's, a, it's about graphs and histograms. So let's go look at a histogram. Here, if I go to my activity screen, I have my resource usage histogram. Check it out. We now have the option to display the exact value of the bar right on the screen. And how did I do that? Okay, so there's a new option. If you go into your resource usage profile options or any of your graph options, you go to this graph tab, and there's a show values checkbox. You turn that on, now you can see the exact value of the bar. Really great stuff. So the last thing I want to tell you about is an import option for XER files. I don't know if you ever hit this problem, but we did have a problem with overblown XER files again. They were stuffed full of risk categories that somehow that came from somewhere but made our XER files like huge. And then the import would take a long, long time and it would pollute our database with all these risk categories. So we have got a fix for that now. When we import an XER, what we can do is opt not to include risk categories. And I'll show you how that works. It's pretty simple and not that fancy here, but now we can modify these import configurations. And here's risk categories. I guess this didn't exist before. And what we can do is just do not import them like this. And then this solves this whole bloating of our database with all these extra risk categories. Now, if you are a P6 cloud user, you probably have seen some of these features already because the new versions of P6 come every month as a P6 cloud user. But for those of you who are not P6 cloud users and on-premise, then all of these new features are available in the latest version that you can download now from Oracle. So that wraps up this video and all the new features in version 20.12 of P6. Make sure you check out the blog post where you can see some of the other features that have been added to ePPM at the same time. And stay tuned for future videos where I'm going to do some deep diving on some of these new features and explore them in detail. If you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our channel and you'll stay notified of new videos as they come available. I'm Michael. Happy planning. I'll see you soon.